Here from CBS News Apollo headquarters at Kennedy Space Center, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning. It's T minus one hour, 29 minutes, and 53 seconds, and counting in just an hour and a half. If all goes well, Apollo 11 astronauts Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are to lift off from pad 39A out there on the voyage man always has dreamed about. Next stop for them, the moon. The astronauts are on board now. They're uh, strapped into their spacecraft atop the Saturn's third stage. They've been there for just about an hour. They're going through the final checkout of all the systems aboard the spacecraft to be sure they're really ready to go. At 9.32 a.m. Eastern Time, that huge 36-story high launch vehicle is scheduled to thunder to life, and pushing the astronauts into temporary orbit around the Earth. At two and a half hours later, Another rocket burn will send the spacecraft on its way to the moon. And then on a Sunday afternoon, the landing on the moon. And at 2.20 a.m. Monday, July 21st, a date which will live in history as long as man is on this planet and on the other planets, 38-year-old civilian Neil Alden Armstrong is to become the first human being to touch the moon. Aldrin will follow just 20 minutes later. And over the years to come, Many others are going to walk on the desolate lunar surface. But Armstrong will take that first step in more ways than one. And many things will never be the same again. For in addition to the mission the three astronauts will perform and the experiments they'll undertake, the samples they'll bring back, these men will carry with them many other things. Many things that are not so nearly so easy to describe. There is the spirit of such men as Marco Polo and Columbus and Lindbergh, the dreams of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, and the vision of Kepler and Galileo, and the skill of Shepard and Glenn, Shira, Gagarin, Titoff, and all the others. They'll carry thoughts of the moon goddess Diana and, uh, I suppose, of green cheese. And boring through the vastness, the blackness, and the cold of space, They'll carry the pledge made eight years ago by President Kennedy to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely in this decade. The description of this mission, the fundamental purpose of this mission was put very simply by NASA, remembering those words. The prime purpose of the mission of Apollo 11, to put man on the moon and return him safely. During the planned Apollo 11 journey of just over eight days, they're supposed to splash down a week from tomorrow in the Pacific, 1,250 miles southwest of Hawaii. We'll hear talk about, we'll be concerned with such things as mid-course corrections, SPS burns, and docking, rendezvous. The astronauts, of course, will be concerned with very much more. So it is now, before they go, as their gleaming vehicle sits poised and peaceful out there behind me on pad 39A. That there is time, uh, if only briefly in this busy morning, to think of those three men and the burdens and the hopes that they carry on behalf of all mankind. It's going to be a journey, certainly, for the history books of all of those things that have entered the history books in our generation. This will live the longest. This, it is hoped, successful launch of Apollo 11 and the successful landing on the moon. Out here, there are thousands of newsmen from around the world to cover this launch and to witness this history in the making. David Schumacher is at the press site right alongside our CBS News uh, Space Center here. David? Paula, good morning. Of the uh, more than 3,000 reporters assigned here, at least a third were on hand before dawn this morning. That is the best indication of all that this is a really big story. Most reporters wouldn't get up early for World War III. The typing you may hear in the background is the sound of reporters for afternoon papers filing their stories, complete with vivid descriptions of the liftoff. The men walking around with their hands in their pockets work for morning papers. They have plenty of time before they must start writing. Not everyone with his hands in his pockets works for a morning paper, of course. A good number of the reporters, publishers, and editors are here. And to a man, the reporters have asked me to say that they are reassured by the presence of their bosses and grateful for their assistance. The American newsmen you see here, of course, are old hands at this and somewhat burdened by the responsibility of getting the rocket off on time. The foreign reporters, many of whom do not speak English, much less understand the space jargon, are having much more fun. 
This is David Schumacher at the press site. Now to Ike Pappas at the VIP viewing area. Mike Pappas uh, is at the VIP viewing area, all right, as we saw there, but uh, he uh, was not ready to go, or uh, the technicians uh, perhaps weren't. We'll come back to him very shortly. Of the VIPs, uh, they count into the thousands, and they got so, uh, the protocol problem got so difficult that they worked up to the VIPs, that's very, very important persons, and finally worked up to the VVVIPs, which is very, very, very important persons. Uh, they, they include uh, ambassadors from most of the nations of the world who will be here. Uh, the notable exception being Ambassador Dabrinin of the Soviet Union who turned down the invitation to come down. And it is believed that the reason was uh, that uh, if he came here, the Soviet would be obligated to invite us to witness one of their launchings. And one of the great differences in our two space programs is that the American program is carried out in the full glare of publicity with uh, all of the American people who share the awesome cost, sharing uh, the uh, burdens and the view of the launch for which they have paid. This is not so in the Soviet Union. Of course, besides the VVVIPs, VVIPs, and VIPs who are here, there are thousands upon thousands of uh, people like you and I who are here, the uh, plain citizens of our nation who have come to watch this launch, and Haywood Hale Brune is among them on the beach. Well, we're here with just the peas, as it were, and that American ingenuity, which is so marvelous at pragmatic problems like rocket launchings and so impatient of philosophical ones, is kind of evident everywhere here on the beach in the improvised homes of the launch watchers. I mean, there are people who are enjoying a kind of a dormitory gossip, just as if there were nothing going on except a little fun. There are uh, campers you can find where it's, it's as if someone were a hermit crab bringing his whole home along with him and then there are the people who are satisfied just to have a soft place on the beach that will do well enough some people like to have a soft place which is raised a little bit from the ground because there have been a great many bugs here at one time or another and there are people who have using that sort of american institution the automobile have made the automobile their home for the day but generally speaking, people are beginning to get up, stretch, move around. The, the spraying which we had earlier and which choked us all a bit has made it sort of bug-free. And we don't have to worry whether we are VVV or VV or V or whatever. And back to you, Walter, with all the VIPs and with the men going up. About the VIPs that are important, Woody, but the DDT. Is that the way you read it? <laughs> uh, there, the number of persons who have crowded on those beaches uh, uh, is not, has not been estimated as yet by any competent authority, but it's uh, well in the tens of thousands, apparently, uh, nothing like the million that uh, were uh, predicted at one time, which would have brought some 350,000 vehicles to the area, too many to even crowd onto the 11,000 miles of road in this Brevard County, Florida. Uh, but there are thousands upon thousands of they, many of them camped overnight, as Woody told you, and the roads around the area are clogged, even to the extent that the transfer van bringing the astronauts uh, from their overnight uh, headquarters uh, to the launching pad uh, was uh, delayed by some 10 minutes getting through that crowd with all the escort that it had. And now, Ike Pappas, I think we are ready to pick you up at the VIP viewing area. Ike? This is the VIP area, but it is divided into uh, various sections, uh, various uh, gray wooden stands, and they designate VIP, VVIP, triple VIP, quadruple VIP, and so forth. I'm standing in the uh, stands that will uh, seat the diplomatic corps directly behind me, the stands reserved for Vice President Agnew and former President Johnson, who have not arrived yet. Beyond that, NASA officials, 5,000 guests in all, including some 400 congressmen and members of the Supreme Court, the presidential cabinet, 20 governors, 40 mayors, representatives of 60 nations will be here. Their flags are flying behind us. The NASA official who escorted us over to this site today uh, called this a, a Roman circus. This is the Roman circus area, he said. And uh, it is not exactly that, but there is a festive feeling here. And now let's go to other visitors to Haywood Hale Brune on the beach with the tourists. Uh, I guess you didn't get the word. We just went to 
Haywood Hale Bruin, Woody on the uh, Woody on the beach, uh, and but we're going to be going back to him and to you as your VIPs uh, fill those stands. Uh, they'll have to get there in a hurry. They've got just one hour and 19 minutes to go. But that's the countdown clock. One hour, 19 minutes, and 48 seconds until the launch of the Saturn V. You see a shot here with some of the press photographers uh, on the edge of the water there. That water, incidentally, between us at the press site and the uh, launching site, pad 39A, is the barge canal, which comes right up here and, uh, and terminates right here in front of us. Uh, it is the canal on which they bring the barges carrying the great Saturn V uh, launch vehicle. It is too large to be transported overland, and it's one of those many, many problems they had to figure out when they decided they were going to the moon with these large boosters, how to get them here from where they went.